All right, let's take a look at example three. Suppose that A and B are angles in standard position with sine of A equal to four-fifths. And our interval here is a little bit messed up, so let's fix it right now. Um, it's supposed to be between positive, A is going to be between positive pi over two, and this should just be pi. So sorry for that typo, but it should be A will be in between pi over two and pi, so that means it's in the second quadrant. So that's quadrant two. And then cosine B is negative five thirteenths, and B is in between pi and three pi over two, so that puts it in the third quadrant. All right, so find each of the following. Well, I like pictures, so I'm gonna draw a picture of what my angles look like first. And I'm gonna put it right up here. All right, so I'm gonna let my angle A be red. Let's move that down just a little bit so you can see it better. Um, so I'm going to say, okay, my angle A is in quadrant 2, and the sine value is 4 fifths, so this is 4, and the 5 goes here. Well, a 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triple, so we know that the x value is negative 3, and actually, I'm going to put that on the inside of the triangle. And then I'm going to do my angle B in blue, and we know, we know our, we're in the... We know we're in the third quadrant, and we know that cosine is negative 5 thirteenths. So we know this x value is negative 5, the r value is 13, and that's another Pythagorean triple, so our y value has to be negative 12. Alright, so now looking at part A, sine of A plus B, so we want to use our some identity for sine. All right, so now we're going to find our values. Well, we know sine A is 4 fifths because the problem told us that. We know cosine of B is negative 5 thirteenths. Again, the problem told us that. And now we can find sine of B, if we look up here at the blue one. Sine of B is negative 12 thirteenths. And cosine of A is negative 3 fifths. And now it's just a matter of multiplying. So we have negative 20 over 65 plus, because we have two negatives here, so plus 36 over 65. And then when we add those together, we get 16 over 65. And so that's um, the sine of A plus B. Well, now let's look at the tangent. Tangent of A plus B. So we have tangent of A plus, oops, forgot my A. Tangent of A plus tangent B over 1 minus tangent A tangent B. Okay, and now we just plug in what we know. So tangent of A is going to be four, negative 4 thirds. Tangent of B is going to be 12 thirds. I'm sorry, 12 fifths. Can't even read my own handwriting. And it's positive because you had a negative 12 and a negative 5, so that makes it positive. And then over 1 minus negative 4 thirds times the 12 fifths. So then it's just a matter of simplifying. So in order to add these two, we need a common denominator. So let's get that common denominator here. We're going to multiply by 5 over 5. Okay, we're going to multiply by 3 over 3. And 
And then here, we're just going to multiply them. Um, and because I know my denominator is going to be 15, I'm going to go ahead and change this to 15 over 15. And that's an equal sign there, not a negative. All right, so we have two negatives, so it's going to be plus, and then 48 over 15. So we have a complex fraction, but we can simplify this. Um, so we have negative, or we have positive 16 over 15 over 63 over 15. Okay, and then when we divide fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal. So it's going to be 16 over 15 times 15 over 63. So those 15s will cancel, and we're left with 16 over 63. We have 16 over 63. All right, so now let's take a look at part C. The quadrant of A plus B. Well, we already found the sine of A plus B, and we found the tangent of A plus B. So let's take a look at those. Our sine of A plus B is positive. So if sine is positive, we know we need to be in the first or second quadrant, right? Well then, let's take a look over here at tangent. Our tangent is positive. So we know that we have to be in the first or third quadrant. Well, this means quadrant one or three. And remember we said this one was positive, so it was one or two. So since they both are in one, it has to be in quadrant one. So the quadrant of A plus B is quadrant one. All right, so let's take a look at example number four. We need to verify that the equation is an identity. And we have sine of the, of the quantity of pi over six plus beta plus cosine of the quantity of pi over 3 plus beta equals cosine beta. So we're going to use our sum identities to show that this actually equals cosine beta. So first we'll use our sum identity for sine. Right, and then we're going to use our sum identity for cosine. So we have cosine pi over 3 sine beta. No, cosine beta. Minus sine pi over 3 sine beta. Okay, so we want to show that all of this equals cosine of beta. Well, we know sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. We know cosine of pi over 6 is um, square root of 3 over 2. We know cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. And then we know sine of pi over 3 is um, square root of 3 over 2. Now we're looking for our like terms. Well, we have 1 half cosine beta, 1 half cosine beta. Oh. 1 half plus 1 half is 1. So that's cosine beta. And then we have square root of 3 over 2 sine of beta minus square root of 3 over 2 sine beta, so those cancel. And so that equals cosine beta, so we have verified that. 